Today we'll be doing the Game Hacking Village Capture the Flag Challenge from DEF CON 32. This event was sponsored by Guided Hacking last year and again this year for DEF CON 33, so make sure not to miss this event. Level 5 is the first time that a simple value change won't be sufficient for us to actually solving this. The value we do need to change is actually modifying how this turret operates so that we don't die, or finding a way to make sure we have infinite health. Now, the normal ways we've been modifying our health and ammo uh, have been just decrementing and figuring out how the value changes, but unfortunately that's not sufficient because the moment we touch this red square, our health goes to zero. And when we try to get our position and say we teleport ourselves into the square, uh, the same problem happens, we get shot and then we die. This will be the first time we should probably use Cheat Engine's mono features. This is a Unity game, it's compiled in C Sharp. Now, this would allow us to look at the actual classes, methods, and entities that are within the game because these references are all just available by how a .NET program works. And so if we look up something like a turret, we see that there are two turret classes. I'm gonna start with the first one and hope it's the right one. And what we can do with this is look at the different methods that are actually available. There's different static fields that we can inspect as well, but I'm not too worried about those. I look at fire laser, if I double click on that, it brings us to the uh, runtime jitted function. So this is how the assembly looks in memory, not actually how it looks on disk if we were to open this up in a decompiler. Now, I might want to make just a simple script that patches the beginning of this so that when the function's called, it simply just returns and actually doesn't do anything. And so what I have here is a script that does exactly that. It looks at the laser turret fire laser at offset zero and says, we're going to patch it with just a simple ret. And, uh, you know, being in a simple auto assemble script, I should be able to just click here and it changes it to a ret and, you know, I can undo that as much as I want to. So back in the game, I can go over here and I should be able to just jump right through. Boom, now I got the flag and on to, on to the next level. Putting on level one, the goal is to obtain this gun within the side of the shield. Every time we run into the gun though, to try to get it, we actually get shot by the turret, which chips away at the health of us as well as the health of the shield. What we can do is we can instead look for our health. Our starting health should be 100. And because we don't really know the type, I'm gonna set the value type to all. It's likely a float or an integer, but this will cover most bases. And we can start whittling away down to try to narrow our results. We run into shield again, brings us down to 90, and then we could run into as many times as we need to filter, but it doesn't look like we need to anymore. We can either hold it or we can change the value to a really high value. For now, I'm going to hold it using the active button and just keep running into the shield. We see my health doesn't really change anymore, but the shield does, and allowing me to grab a gun and the flag. In level 2, we're given 10 bullets to kill this unicorn. Unfortunately, those 10 bullets are not enough to actually kill the unicorn. We're actually probably one off from being able to kill it. So what we can do instead is we can take the same approach we did with health and look for the bullet count. We start with 10 bullets, so we can start with the 10 value scan. This is likely an integer, but again, we'll start with all value types just in case. We'll go ahead and shoot again. I'm going to shoot into the void so not aggro the unicorn. And that gives us looks like to be three values. Now, these could be different references to different locations that are all holding the same thing. So there's probably a value for this uh, display here. So where it says six, there's a value that's actually tracking the amount of bullets and maybe something else that's keeping track. So if we're not sure, we can go through and change these values or we can just hold all of these and just keep shooting the unicorn. And the unicorn is now defeated and we've got our flag. Level three here, we have to combine two of the techniques that we've learned from the last two levels. I've already found the bullets and the health, and this should allow us to actually just run in under the shield. The gimmick here is we can't really get around the shield unless we just run. And thankfully, because I'm not losing any health, I can kind of just stay here underneath the unicorn and then just start blasting it. Alternatively, we could have just found the position and teleported us, but that's for a later time. Level four starts out deceptively easy. You should be able to just grab the flag, but the moment you try to, you get dropped down. We need to find our z-axis. So we're gonna be using this staircase to move up and down vertically. And then in Cheat Engine, we're gonna go find a floating value of unknown initial value. We're gonna do our first scan and use an increased value or a decreased value depending if we go up or down. And then we might throw in some unchanged values in the moments that it's not changed at all. And we'll just keep repeating this pattern until eventually we get a finite list of values that are relatively small. Now we should be left with a list of roughly 50 values. 
Now we can take all of these and we can throw them into our address list. Now, this is gonna be a big list to sort through and really we just kind of have to go through each one of these and figure out which one, when we affect it, actually changes our position in vertical space and hold them and when we try to jump if for some reason we're held and it seems to be glitching then that probably is something that actually affects our position otherwise we can just remove it and we're going to keep on this pattern until we get narrowed down to two to three values which might be our reference Now we're left with two values. I've narrowed it down to these where both of these values seem to affect our Z axis. So what we can start doing is messing with the values until we find one that actually allows us to adjust our player to the platform level. And there we go. Looks like we were able to get our player up here and grab the flag. Now onto the next one. In level six, our goal is to give a fish to the cat statue. Now, unfortunately, all we're given is this apple, and unfortunately, it also doesn't like the apple. And so we need to find a way to either pass the check or give ourselves a fish. Now, we can still use the mono features inside of Cheat Engine to look at the different .NET classes to see if there's anything that has to do with a fish. And it just so happens there is one that does. When we look at that, there's one function called onTriggerEnter. My guess is based on how the class is named that this is probably a class that checks, do we have the fish? So this is probably the statue where we're standing checking if we have that. Double clicking on it, we see that there is all of this assembly logic here. It kind of spans on for a good bit. And so it might be good to get a high level overview of what this perk or what this function actually does. Now we can do control shift D and actually open up a control flow graph. And looking at this overall, this assembly here, uh, we see that the left side actually ends in a ret, which is not what we want, especially because there's so much logic here and it seems like a bunch will happen if we successfully uh, seem to pass down this side of the branch. But if we end on the left side, we end up actually exiting early. So we want to figure out what, where is this condition actually coming over to this side? And it looks like it's right here. We're jump uh, not greater than has a uh, jump to 1A2 if it actually seems to be not greater than. So that would be this check over here, and then it goes all the way to the red. So we could probably patch out just the JNG with some, say something like a NOP, or modify this so that instead of jumping to this location, it actually jumps to this location. Now we can go back in our, in our assembly view here, in the memory viewer, and look for where that jump actually exists. And it looks like it's this guy right here. And I can go ahead again and create another script. And so we can open up our uh, auto assemble. We can do a cheat table framework and do a code injection. And we'll do another one right here. And then we'll go ahead and add that to the, the table. And so now we should be able to just knob out that jump. Perfect. And it seems to actually change that a little bit too much. Um, this could be because a knob is one byte and this is actually covering one, two, three, four, five, six bytes. So we might actually just need to add a few more knobs into that location. Uh, we'll go ahead and see if that actually does the same thing that we wanted it to do. Great. So it doesn't seem like the actual logic is modified. And so uh, the only logic that we did care about was the fact that that knob or that jump was there. So now when we actually grab and go up to here to have a check, we get the flag. In level seven, the goal is to just start hitting these different pumpkin things. And eventually you're gonna run out of time, not get enough score. And this little blow dart up here is just going to kill you straight to zero. So it's really no use trying to shoot it. You could try to have infinite ammo. You're still not going to be able to reach it in time because your speed of shooting is not fast enough. Now, restarting back to the level, we go back into our .NET info and we'll come across this class called Whack-A-Mole. And in it, there's a function called check win. Now, what's cool is with check win, that seems that's actually pretty obvious. It's, it's checking to see if we won. So whatever the conditions are, uh, unsure. But when we go to this, we go to the beginning here, we can do the same trick we did before. We'll look at a diagram and we see that there's actually just two separate branches. And if you think of how you would implement a check win function, you know, it's going to return true or it's going to return false. So let's look for the case where EAX is set to zero, which is this side, it looks like, and EAX should be set to one over here. Perfect. 
So all we want to make sure is that it goes down this branch since it looks like it doesn't lead anywhere else. It just leads there and then returns. So we'll probably want to at least get rid of these two checks, whatever those might be. Not really sure, you know, what exactly they're checking. There's obviously a couple compares that are happening between the compare and test. But for now, I think it'd just be sufficient to just completely knock those out. So what I've done is I've made a script that actually goes back to this location in, or inside of the memory viewer here. So if we go to 68 and we see that there's the jump right here to 116 and then there's also the jump right here to 116 as far as the offset goes and that's what's correlating to these two right here and the script should just simply knock those out and if we look at the diagram once we've done that we'll see that it actually goes straight through and leaves us with a very simple control flow now that returns one at the end and now that that's enabled we should be able to just approach here we don't even have to worry about shooting and winning and whatever uh, but eventually once the timer runs out we should just get a win boom so we'll just grab our flag and take our leave in level 8 you're expected to find the flag within this chest unfortunately the drop rate is so low it might as well not ever drop we can use melon loader to inspect the chest itself within the scene melon loader we can open unity explorer and open up where the chest object is get to loot and then within loot there should be a reference to the loot table and this will be a loot table uh, object reference upon inspecting that we should be able to then get to the rest of the objects via its the loot table reference and then that should give us six separate objects of all the items that the chest actually has available to give us so in this case we have all six here they're all loot game objects object two is going to be the one that is given to us this is the lottery flag Unfortunately, the chance percentage and the weight are very low compared to the other items. So what we can do in this case is we could also modify the chance percentage or weight, or we can come back to the other objects, say one, which one in this case should be the fish, I believe. And we can actually paste over the fish reference with the game object of the flag. So when we come back over into the game uh, and we press E, instead of spawning the fish, it will give us the flag. And now we have the flag. In level 9, the name of the game is Speed. We need to get to the very end before we get killed by the turret, and we need to also collect all the coins. We can continue to use Unity Explorer to pull up the different objects within this scene, and we're going to grab the player character and the movement from that player. And we're going to change the multiplier, we'll make it 4. You can modify it to whatever you want, but just keep in mind you want some control over the character. And I'll also go ahead and come back to the turret object and just despawn it, so that way it can't have any opportunity to shoot us. And off we are. Now we got our flag. On to the next one. Looking at the game hacking game folder, we actually see that there are 10 levels, but when we look at the level select, there's only nine. So this means we need to use something like Melon Loader and load up Unity Explorer again and search for the scene that we were missing here, because obviously one is there. And right away, we can see that there is a level 10 hidden within this. We can load up that scene and boom, we're here. Now, this scene is actually has logic that is in DN Spy. Now that logic does expect you to have a key, but we could probably get around that. Instead of giving us the key and using something like Cheat Engine, we could just spawn the flag here using uh, uh, Unity Explorer. We can do this by looking for the hidden flag value. And this would be the name of the object. Double click it, and we can see that this is a valid object. We should be able to just instantiate it. So now that should spawn it within our world. And we can go find it. It looks like it's right here behind the unicorn. And boom, we got the flag.